Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of September 27, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a remarkable astrological week, but I actually think that this may be the most important astrological week for us as part of a truly important and rare astrological year. 2020 is big and astrologers have known that it was going to be big for many many years and I remember years ago it must have been 2014 or 2015 uh, that I attended an astrology conference in Mexico City and there were many beautiful and brilliant speakers there and I remember there was one speaker who was talking about 2020 and many astrologers walked out of her talk because she was very doomy and gloomy and uh, a lot of people didn't like it a lot of people criticized her they said that uh, she was manifesting something really bad and look to be fair coming to know this person i won't mention who it is but coming to know this person's predictions a little bit she is on the doomy and gloomy side a mexican a spanish language astrologer however it has been remarkable to so many of us astrologers to see how much of what she actually said has been coming to pass. It has been a difficult year. It began with powerful energy and we are in the middle of a remarkable shift. It is nothing less than our understanding of ourselves and of our power that is going through a change now. It is a leap of consciousness, but there's also pain. There's also sadness as well. There is a sense of powerlessness and we as people, as human beings, we don't like to be powerless, right? We like things to be somewhat predictable or at least to feel somewhat in control. And just when you think you're in control, well, along comes a reminder that sometimes that may not be the case and so we began this year with very powerful energy i've spoken of it before it is the conjunction of pluto and saturn in the sign of capricorn the last time this happened was the protestant reformation this was a shift in the way that we understood our relationship to God itself, to higher power. It was a shift in our understanding of our worthiness and of who has the power. And it was this shift that ultimately served as a necessary condition for so much else that we have manifested, including the modern world today. I do think that the Western world as we know it today is very much rooted in the Protestant Reformation. It is a necessary condition to have the Protestant Reformation, this shift in our understanding that we don't need intermediaries to understand our relationship with a higher power, that we can read a sacred text for ourselves and decide what it means. This would have been blasphemous. It was blasphemous back then. But this shift needed to happen so that we could go on to discover more about ourselves, about our power, and also in tandem, discover more about the sky. The discovery of Uranus as a mirror, as a reflection of what it is that is happening on a level of human consciousness would not have been possible, was it not for this shift of understanding, this conjunction of Saturn and Pluto that had taken place so many years earlier, centuries earlier. And so we have begun this year and we are now nearing the end of this year. And in many ways, it has been, I think, in some ways, theoretical, right? We know that a lot is changing. Some of us are feeling and aware of powerlessness. And that is a reality of our existence. It is a reality of the world that we have created. A lot of times you may find examples, especially in new age circles of people talking about how you manifest your own reality. They talk about the law of attraction. Everyone may get a harmonious Jupiter transits from time to time, and you may be blessed to have something like that in your chart. And there certainly are moments in life when you feel 
like you're very much in the flow of life. Like you're thinking it, you're believing it, you're aligning with it, you're taking action and good things are happening as a result and it feels like life is going the way that you want. And then along comes Saturn, along comes Uranus, along comes Chiron, along comes Pluto and Neptune as well as an outer planet but with Neptune sometimes you don't know what's really happening in the moment it isn't until after the fact that you realize like oh I had a Neptune transit I didn't really realize that was going on and because Neptune can be a bit of a fog or some confusion so you don't always realize it in the moment but you know just when you think you've got it all figured out the universe lets you know that sometimes there is a higher will playing out and as part of the mystery, as part of the world that we have created, it isn't always going to be sunshine and roses. We have created a world of dichotomy. We have created a world where as much as it is that you are willing to experience pain and sadness, is as much as you may experience love and joy in your life. And if you have any doubt of that, well, this year, I think, is setting a lot of people straight. I have met people who um, have cultivated the law of attraction without self-knowledge, and those aren't really people that anyone wants to be around too long, <laughs> really, to be honest. Uh, it's just to think that you are a law unto yourself, that you are all that matters, um, is quite intriguing. It's one way to live, certainly. I was reminded as I was looking at this week with the very powerful astrological energy taking place, and I was thinking, what makes it so important? And what is it that makes it a week that may feel like one that stands out to a whole lot of people out there? And I think that part of it is the very visceral nature of what is transpiring now. Yes, we had huge energies to start the year. We're gonna have big energies towards the end of the year as well with the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. That can bring some wonderful developments where it comes to scientific things taking place. I do think, and I know a lot of the world is kind of shut down right now. It is gonna be that conjunction that should bring very hopeful news that starts to open things up, although not completely because Saturn will still be in Aquarius. Social restrictions are gonna be in place uh, of one kind or another. But what makes this week so important? It is layered, it is powerful. It is a week of vulnerability. It is a week of feeling exposed and yes, understanding the limits of our power. Mars retrograde right now on Tuesday is going to connect in a conversation of tension with Saturn. Saturn is stationary direct on that day. And it is Saturn standing still in the sky at the height of its power, squaring Mars. Well, this energy on the surface of it can be rather frustrating, but there's a phrase that says reality bites, right? Sometimes reality is a bitter pill to swallow. For some people, that may very well be the case at this time. It is about understanding how we have used our power whether it is rightly or ethically or not. But more than that, with Saturn, it is about being aware of limits. With a square and Saturn, there is a sense of not being able to have things, situations, the way that you want. There's a sense of not being able to get what you want. And of course, Mars being about personal power, personal agency, even with that, there are limits to it. And so just when you think you've got it all under control, you know it all, you, you're clear about yourself and how all that you can do, here comes Saturn squaring Mars that says, well, hold on, let's be honest, let's be real and be honest with yourself in a way that may not be comfortable. It is a part of the world that we have created. And then 
on Thursday, we are going to have a full moon. Now, this full moon is happening in the same sign, in the sign of Aries that Mars is in right now. And it is happening hand in hand with Chiron. Chiron is the mythological wounded healer. So Chiron was a, a teacher, a philosopher. He was a teacher to the gods. He um, was a centaur, so he was part animal, part horse, part human. And it was Mars, interestingly, <laughs> the mythological Mars, that was having some fun, being careless, not thinking about things too much, shooting arrows all over the place, and one of those arrows hit Chiron in the thigh. And Chiron was in such excruciating pain for so long that the gods took mercy on him. They said, you've done a lot of good, you've helped a lot, and now we will make you immortal. There is this understanding, even in ancient times, and certainly we see it in spiritual traditions, some of the most powerful and impactful spiritual traditions in the world, they talk about and they explore this understanding that sometimes in life, not always, of course, but sometimes, we have to confront the reality that our human existence includes suffering in order to transcend it. It is through that, through the acceptance of it and moving through it that we find immortality. We find that thing that we can tap into that ultimately makes us strong and immortal and in many ways shine very, very bright. It is only in the confrontation and the acceptance of suffering that we will find that. And we can see this in other spiritual traditions as well. This is a universal spiritual lesson that we see show up again and again and again. Uh, we see it in the teachings of the Buddha who said life is suffering and he taught healthy detachment to escape suffering. It was the example that we see with Jesus Christ who symbolically represents the embodiment of the divine who embraced suffering as well as a necessary condition of humanity as a pathway towards then transcending the physical, finding immortality, proving one's divinity by embracing suffering. You know, all of us are varied people. We are uh, rich and complex human beings. Uh, that is part of the fun and the joy of being human in this incarnation. And uh, I, of course, have had my spiritual journey as well, <laughs> like anybody else out there. So as part of my spiritual journey, I'm gonna share some things now. Maybe I'll cut it out because it is like my Chiron right there on the surface, right? This is me being very exposed, very vulnerable here. So we'll see, maybe I'll cut it out. Uh, so many years ago, I was a very young lady and I was a different type of person. I was who I needed to be at that time. And whomever it is that I am now, I'm looking forward to seeing whom it is that I may become. But, you know, there are moments in life that serve as a turning point. And there is a, a theory, a thought that human beings don't really like change. They don't like uncertainty and change uh, as part of the characteristic of change is that you are embracing uncertainty. Some people resist that and in a year like this, we've seen a whole lot of that where uh, people are resisting things that may be changing now, the uncertainty of this time and all that is uh, coming from it. A lot of it is rooted in this fear of the uncertainty. And so anyways, I was a much, much younger person at the time. This is over 20 years ago. And at the time I was, you know, experimenting with different things, uh, including uh, recreational substances, okay? And I don't recommend it at all, <laughs> actually. It was not, uh, not a pathway that I would recommend for everybody. But uh, yeah, I remember uh, one of the things that I experimented with was E. And again, I don't recommend it. It is not fun. I mean, you're in the moment 
and you're having certain thoughts and feelings and illusions and things like that. But you know, for every high, there is a low and the low is like pretty intense and it lasts a while. So that in and of itself should be a reason not to uh, indulge, but to each their own. And so anyways, I uh, had a night like this, lots of fun, lots of partying, lots of elation, lots of high. Uh, and then I decided the next day, the next afternoon, to go to the suburbs and visit my parents. Not recommended, okay? I do not recommend that at all. You're already doing things that I don't recommend. Now you add that layer to it. Anyways, uh, so I went and my dad picked me up at the train station and I was there in his car. And I was saying to him uh, some pretty crazy stuff. So I was saying things like, I am a light, I am hope, I am, you know, the bee's knees, basically. All these things I said to him. And then I looked over at him and he had this look on his face. And I said, what are you thinking? And he said, I'm listening to you. That look on his face, uh, that is what I realize is hitting rock bottom. <laughs> that look on his face and what I saw reflected back to me was a turning point for my life. Because I realized that just about everything that I'd said was rooted in ego. And ego is fear. Ego is insecurity. Ego isn't coming from a place of love, of genuine giving. Ego comes from a place of lack. And it was at that time that I realized that humility is a necessary condition if one is to strengthen a genuine sense of love and wisdom in their life. Now, I say that the universe is wise and loving, and I believe that the universe is wise and loving, and I don't say that to be Pollyanna. I'm not saying that the universe is perfect. There is a wisdom playing out. There is a perfection playing out in the symbols. They are reflecting us, and that way they certainly are perfect. But it is in reconciling with the ways that life is not always rainbows and sunshine. It is in reconciling with the times that life can be challenging, that we are granted the opportunity to become more wise, to become more loving. And so I share this with you for a reason. There is a purpose behind this, and that is a sky like this, it will bring humility. It will ground you quick. A sky like this is about vulnerability. It is about exposure, absolutely. But sometimes it is what we didn't want to look at, right? The wounds that we want to deny and where they come from, the confrontation of that can be what makes us feel most vulnerable. And I do think all of us in some way, given the sky and especially if it is the case that your chart is being activated by any of these energies. Now, if you have any planets right around 25 degrees, which means if you were born right around the 15th of the month, you know, give or take a few days on either side, if it is that you are a cardinal sign, for that matter, if you are an Aries, a Libra, a Capricorn, a Cancer, you are going to feel these energies that much more. So if your sun, your moon, or your rising sign is in these signs, but really every sign out there, all of us in at least one area of life is going to have this reconciliation, this sense of confrontation that it will invite humility. Now, how much will we embrace it will be based on and be rooted in our spiritual and psychological health and awareness. And how hard we make it on ourselves is also rooted in our ability to be aware and to focus on the spiritual lessons playing out. So when I think about the life that I have now, uh, over 20 years later, I see how much of it and what it is now, whether uh, I have co-created it, uh, whether it showed up for me. Certainly, I do think that 
so much of whom we become is really rooted in opportunities that we have available to us. Um, but I think about how much of it was rooted in what took place that day and what I saw reflected back to me in my father's face. And it was a moment of honesty and it was painful and it was hard, but it was good because ultimately it made me better. And it made me better because I chose to engage it and listen to life. And that doesn't mean I'm perfect, <laughs> far from it. If you're human and you're here and you're in a body, it means that there's very likely a whole lot more to learn in this lifetime. But I do think that that moment served as a catalyst, right? That was me hitting rock bottom. And from there and realizing that I was not whom it is that I desired to be and realizing the root of the things that I was saying. I mean, it's one thing to say things. What are you actually living? What are you demonstrating? You know, what kind of person are you? What are you saying about yourself and why do you need to say it? Because the truth tends to be evident. Certain things don't need to be said. It is based on life showing us some truths about ourselves and so much more. But um, it was from there that, you know, I went on, I decided I was going to, you know, change my life and I started to explore and especially spiritually, I started to grow uh, and learn different spiritual modalities. So along the way, I did uh, meet a, a wonderful friend, a spiritual mentor to me, and he was very much part of my life, like, 15 to 20 years ago, like the five year period there. And he's not a public person. He's not an astrologer. He doesn't have a website or anything. So I, I you know, don't feel the need to share his name or anything like that. Um, but he was a spiritual mentor to me and I have had a few in my life. I've been very blessed in that way. And one of the lessons, one of the things that he, he spoke to me about a conversation we had that always stuck with me, it always stayed so close to me. He said that when faith is healthy, it questions itself. When faith is healthy, it wanes. And it is the world now, like I realized from that conversation, and I contemplate sometimes the world that we have created, that we have co-created together, and how so much of what has been part of suffering in the ancient world, in the modern world, in contemporary times, a lot of this is rooted in people who didn't question their faith. When faith is healthy, it questions itself. And we see, based on some things that have happened in the world and in the past, I'm thinking of like the conquistadors here in Mexico, all the pain and the suffering that was created, the destruction that was created, those people had faith. They were guided by faith that didn't question itself. And so much of this part of the world that I live in now is still affected by people who didn't question their faith. And there are so many examples of this again and again. We see this in, in history and in our world today. And so we have this sky, this very consequential sky that is going to bring a lot of our feelings right to the surface. And if we are lucky, it will bring questions. If we are lucky, we will get a chance to examine what is genuine faith to us? What is it going to be rooted in? Where is it that we are ready to do the work that a strong faith requires? And faith can only be stronger when we realize where it is that it is not strong where it is waning so we have these big energies happening and in this way i think this is going to be uh, the most important week astrologically speaking in terms of how much people feel in terms of how this week can serve as a turning point and for some people out there because you know i'm always going to be honest with you i'm always going to speak honesty to the symbol for people out there, this can be a week where it feels like they hit rock bottom in some way. But the opportunity, of course, is to choose to cultivate love and wisdom, to choose to be better, to choose to become more aware so that you do align 
and grow and become stronger, have a healthier faith moving forward from here. Now we have other supporting things happening this week that further affirm this. On Tuesday, on the same day that Mars is going to square Saturn, Venus will be trying Mars as well. And that beautiful trine and with uh, Venus in the sign of Leo, Leo has to do with ego, yes, but it can be healthy ego. Any energy, any sign has a range of expression. The spectrum of energy that is the Aquarius Leo axis speaks to ego as well. And so there are healthy ways of engaging ego when it is that we value ourselves, we bring genuine love and acceptance to our journey and our path, where it is that we realize we are worthy of taking action to move in a more positive direction. There are some basics of self-value that are there, right? People who value themselves, now this is actually something that uh, was spoken of in a book that I quote often because it was a book that really changed my life and I've read many times over. It's called The Road Less Traveled by Scott M. Peck. And among the wisdoms in this book, one of it is this understanding that when a person has some measure of value for themselves, they do certain basic things, right? Like they bathe every day. Like that is something that when you have a measure of self-value, you do that. Now, I'm not saying that, again, we're always going to be perfect, right? I'm not saying judge yourself or be harsh on yourself, but these are the little ways in which a healthy ego shows. You are worthy of that effort to get out of bed every day. You are worthy of that effort to do that thing that you know expresses self-love, even when you don't feel like it. And the great thing with this beautiful uh, Leo, Venus, trine, Mars, is that we are aware of what healthy ego looks like. We're willing to engage it. The other beautiful and insightful thing among many in this book is love is honest. Love doesn't just tell you what you want to hear, right? The people who don't really care about you, they may. Yay, you're awesome. That's perfect. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Love is going to be honest with you when you could be doing better. The look on my father's face, that was love. That was honest. And sometimes that is part of what makes love hard. I do my best and I try my best to be here in love and to express love. And that means that I'm going to do my best to be honest. And that means that it isn't always going to be sunshine and roses, but no matter what is happening, I will try to express it in a way that at least will allow you an appreciation of how it is that love could be here how it is that wisdom could be cultivated. And to me, that is an expression of bringing love to what it is that I do. But that's me, <laughs> and we all have our own way of expressing love, and where it is that we're able to be honest, it brings that much more love. We don't wanna be mean, being honest doesn't mean being mean to people, it doesn't mean calling out people, it doesn't mean, you know, so much of what we think honesty is sometimes is just being mean or, again, arises from ego. It arises from a place of uh, criticizing outward so that we don't have to look inward. So we don't wanna do that either. But where it is that we're willing to be honest about what we feel to people where we feel safe expressing it is an act of supreme self-love. And we may be granted that connection to self-love with this beautiful energy. The other thing is early in the week, Mercury will change signs and move into the sign of Scorpio. Now this is important because Mercury is now in shadow. Most of this Mercury retrograde season that we are now in, Mercury is direct in shadow. About two and a half weeks from the time this week starts, Mercury will go retrograde. And most of this larger Mercury retrograde season will be spent with Mercury in the sign of Scorpio. And of course, this is an energy of truth. 
It is an energy of transformation, of digging very deep, of being honest with ourselves. And these are the enlightened ways of engaging scorpion energy. And then there's the other way of engaging scorpion energy, which is about power games and manipulation and, um, and trying to control things that maybe are best surrendered. So understanding more fully where we are within that spectrum and finding intellectual connections that reach the heart so that we are then able to make changes and to transform ourselves guided by clarity of mind that reaches the heart, well, that may very well be part of the journey ahead and part of one of the characteristics of this Mercury retrograde season. And then finally, at the end of the week, right around Friday is when Venus will change signs, moving into the sign of Virgo. And this is going to invite us to find love in the details. Invite us to think about what it means when love is embodied, when it is demonstrated, when it is grounded. So going you know, back to this idea, like it's wonderful to have faith, it's wonderful to think things, right? to believe things about yourself, what are you living in each of your moments, right? What is coming from a healthy place within you? Well, look at your actions. Faith without works is dead. And some would say love without works is dead. And that is what Venus in Virgo is going to invite us to explore in the weeks ahead. Now, finally, I do also want to say that this week, Pluto is slowing down to a standstill. This is adding to the intensity of this time. You know, I started off talking about Pluto and how it is connected to powerlessness, to strong energies. And it is gonna be this week that we will feel that energy growing that much more. Each of us is reaching a turning point. It's all working together and it is Pluto stationary, officially going direct at the very beginning of next week. So I'll talk about it more when we get there, but it is Pluto slowing right down that is going to have its energies magnified that much more. We have a magnified Saturn. We have Pluto slowing down to a standstill at the end of the week at the same degree that he met Saturn at back in January. And this is gonna be one of those turning point moments, certainly, but first, there's gonna be a whole lot that gets kicked up for a whole lot of us and where it is that we may find ourselves being obsessive, which is a risk under a sky like this, where it is that we find ourselves unwilling to accept the things that we have no power over. It is going to be this energy that will bring all of that to the surface, but that is ultimately part of what can serve as that catalyst from which our lives can go in a more empowered and authentic direction. Ultimately, Pluto is about authenticity. It is about getting rid of the superfluous and it is about being more deeply honest with yourself, searingly honest with yourself when needed. And that isn't always comfortable, but very often great things come from that honesty, especially when we remember to ground it in love and ground it in gentleness. And that includes a gentle approach to how it is that we speak to ourselves. And that is going to be one of the most important energies of this time and one of the most important lessons. With the full moon conjunct Chiron, I think there are gonna be a lot of people and Mars squaring Saturn, Saturn stationary direct, Pluto slowing down stationary, all of this says that there are likely going to be heightened feelings, heightened emotions, heightened sensitivities, but also a whole lot of people being very hard on themselves. And it is when we can allow grace to come in towards ourselves that much more that the deeper spiritual lesson and mainly the embodiment of love and wisdom that is there, that we are, becomes that much more apparent we get a chance to actually live love and wisdom. And that is part of the great gift of this time. What I love about this week for us, well, look, it is a big week. 
the most important astrological week of the year is happening right now. And it is this week that will serve as a catalyst, as a turning point, as a crossroads. All of us in some way are going to have to be more honest with ourselves about our motivations, about the things that have hurt us, about the things that frustrate us. It isn't about anyone else, right? This is all this Aries energy after all. And also Capricorn energy. Capricorn energy is structures, it's systems. It's like nameless, faceless kind of energy. And so ultimately it is us that we have to be reconciled with personally and within ourselves. And within that, all these very strong energies to still find peace, to still choose to explore and strengthen what faith means to us and to still commit to love and wisdom. Well, that to me is a very good way to use this energy. But more than that, that to me is a truly strong and unstoppable and undeniable light, vulnerability, is power and vulnerability is the pathway to immortality vulnerability inspires the world changes the world and it aligns the world with greater love and wisdom as well well thank you so much for watching what do you love about this week let me know in the comments below i love reading you guys and of course if you want to know how all this very powerful sky speaks to you and your sign log on to nadiashaw.com sign up to be one of my superstars superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week unlimited access to special horoscopes and more all of this in the superstar space i look forward to meeting you there if you don't already have your Mars retrograde special horoscope, you may want to pick that up because I do explore these energies that much more deeply. Of course, Mars retrograde special horoscopes are available for free to superstars. Uh, and if you do have that or you are a superstar already, you may want to rewatch that video right about now because I do put what's happening right now this week into context of this larger trend. But this week in and of itself stands alone in key ways as well. Now, I have amazing classes coming up. I've had amazing classes as well. Earlier today, we did a class on Tarot Part One, the Major Arcana. What a great group. Thank you to everybody who joined me live, the people who watch it on the download, all of that. I appreciate each and every one of you. Next week, we are going to have the Major Arcana Part Two. Two. So that's going to be a lot of fun as well. The Major Arcana Part 2, we're going to do the remainder cards and you can still sign up. You can get Part 1, you can download it, be ready to join us live or wait for the download for Part 2 as well. And I look forward to meeting you in class. It is going to be later on in this autumn session, Part 2, that we are going to have two classes on uh, the Minor Arcana in Tarot for Astrologers. We are going to have Part 2 of Lilith. Uh, looking at Lilith and aspect to planets and points. And we're also going to have Mercury. So understanding this personal planet, I think is going to be very illuminating for a lot of people as well. So you can learn more about that at synchronicityuniversity.com. My very big news, of course, is the last of the very first speaker series of Synchronicity University. The last class is happening this week as well. Um, the incredible Mecca Woods is going to be joining us. She is going to be talking about the upcoming transit of Jupiter in Pisces. And it is going to be Jupiter in Pisces for part of 2021 and into 2022. She's going to talk about what that's going to mean for the collective and for you. Now, Mecca Woods, if you don't know, where have you been? She really is a big dog astrologer, one of the most influential uh, young astrologers uh, today. And she is just so accomplished. And I just felt so grateful, so excited that she agreed to be part of this brand new thing, which was a speaker series for Synchronicity University. So it's turned out to be very popular, lots of wonderful feedback. So I'm already starting to court uh, friends of mine and people that I know that I think will add a lot to the Synchronicity University experience. So be on the lookout for that. But there's still time to sign up and to join us for the amazing Mecca Woods. She's done TV, she has books, she has spoken, uh, around the world she has this presence and when you learn from her it's just magnetic like when she speaks 
you can't stop listening. You don't want to stop looking at her. She's just uh, such a force. I mean, that really is the only way to describe it. So very excited to have her. I think a lot of people are going to get so much out of her talk. So if you're interested in whether it's my classes with Synchronicity University or the speaker series and learning from Mecca Woods, links are in the description below. Now I do have books as well and you can get my books wherever books are sold. My very first book was Astrology Realized and this is a beginner's guide not only to understanding the historical and philosophical development of astrology, of course I am a big nerd so you got that in there, uh, but you also have uh, the basics that you need to get started on reading birth charts. And then my next book was The Body and the Cosmos. This is me applying the ideas of Plato to an astrological sky, and it includes meditations for each one of the signs. And my book after that was Prayers to the Sky, and this is like astrological magic light, and it includes uh, the origin myth stories for each of the planets. And then my latest book was The Universe is Wise and Loving, uh, which is a guide to the nodes of the moon in astrology. And so these three books, my newer books, <laughs> these ones debuted as number one new releases in their category on Amazon. So thank you so much for that. And thank you so much to everybody who keeps buying them and supporting them. It does mean so much to me and your trust and your love. Just thank you for that. Now, if you want to know how I would interpret your unique birth chart, have a look at my partnership with Cosmogram. And it is by going on to the Cosmogram site, link in the description below, that you'll be able to enter your birth data. And within hours, they will send you a customized PDF download. And there I go through your different planets. I look at their signs, I look at their houses, I look at their aspects, and we go through each planet one at a time and you get my interpretation. How would I look at that? What sense do I make of what house your sun is in? What sign your moon is in? Uh, what uh, the fact that Pluto trines your sun, what does that mean for you? Well, it is in this report that I do look at it. Have a look at this sample report that is available on the Cosmogram website as well, because it is on that sample report that you will know exactly what it is that you are going to get, but customized to you, of course. And I hope that when you get it, you love it and you cherish it forever. And thank you so much for how popular this report has been. Thank you for all the love and the trust and support of this uh, report and my partnership with Cosmogram. Just thank you. And thank you again uh, for being here. Thank you for watching, for your continued trust. I'm really looking forward to having new things to announce to you uh, in the coming days and weeks ahead. Uh, but you know, I never take for granted that this is a privilege and that I have your trust. And I wish I could tell you, I wish I had the words. This is coming from someone who's a writer and talks uh, on YouTube for you know, my life and has for so many years. I feel sometimes at a loss for words. Uh, my level of gratitude and and it is humbling you know I get this incredible opportunity to share something authentic within me and it is one part of me of course you know we are all as I said multifaceted complex human beings the way that I talk to you on YouTube not always the way that I talk at home. <laughs> I remember uh, years ago when I first moved to Mexico eight years ago, um, I remember a friend that I had at the time, we used to go dancing. And in the beginning especially, I mean, I had just never really allowed myself to enjoy my life and to dance. And I um, went dancing like four days a week for the first year that I lived here. Uh, I was just, you know, I couldn't get enough of the music and the energy and all of that. And I remember her saying one day to me like, you know, I can't believe that this girl you know, getting down to Daddy Yankee on the dance floor is the same girl who's in the videos. And, you know, I thought about that a lot and I was saying, well, yeah, that's one part of me and this is one part of me. I'm not going to put me, you know, dancing to Daddy Yankee on YouTube. You might see some of that in my Instagram stories once in a while. You might see me at concerts once in a while there. But really, it is that I have these different multifaceted parts to my life and my learning and my existence and uh, the fact that I get to make sense of it with you like really you are part of my spiritual journey I get to sit here and talk to you and be honest with you 
and ultimately explore not only the sky and what it means, but how I am coming to understand the sky. And especially in times like this that can feel complicated, that can feel conflicted, that can feel uncertain. This time that I have with you, I get to find peace with it, with you. And that is such a great gift that you give me. And um, I just don't have the words to express how grateful I am for that. I never take for granted that uh, you trust me with my interpretation of the sky and that truly it is a stewardship, it is a privilege, and my heart is full. Just thank you. And I'm looking forward to being here with you and continuing to learn and grow with you as well. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.